Hello everyone. Welcome to another video in morphometric analysis series. So in this video, we will discuss another morphometric parameter, which is mountain front sinuosity. Also, if you have followed our tutorials on the morphometric series so far, you will know that all the morphometric and geomorphic per indices we have discussed includes stream length gradient index, drainage basin asymmetry, hypsometric integral and steepness index. So as we have discussed so far that all these indices are important in understanding the relationship or the competition between different factors that shape the landscape of the region with space and time. However, the quantitative measurements or the morphometric analysis of drainage basin or stream network is not limited to only four factors that we have discussed so far. There will be other factors that we will learn and calculate in this entire series. Talking about this video, we are going to learn one more morphometric indices, which is mountain front sinuosity. And in the next video, we will learn about the ratio of valley, valley floor width to valley height to complement our landscape evolution study. We will first understand the theoretical backgrounds of these two parameters and then walk through step by step hands on using QGIS. So if you are interested in understanding these all these morphometric parameters, don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned by pressing the bell icon. So let's begin. Let's start with understanding what mountain front sinuosity is and how it helps us in understanding the balance between uplift and erosion in a landscape. So in these two pictures, you can see of, uh, they are from the same place. This is Google satellite imagery and this is uh, terrain data, uh, digital elevation model data. So here you can see that all these mountain fronts have different shapes. Okay, so the question arises, why these different, why these mountain fronts have different shapes? What are the things that are responsible for uh, for a particular shape of this mountain front? At some point, these mountain fronts look straight. However, at some places, they look more sinuous, right? So we are going to investigate and focus on these different shapes of the mountain front and how the valley floor width to height ratio tells us about the landscape evolution. So first, mountain front sinuosity. Mountain front sinuosity is defined by the ratio of length of the mountain front along the range Piedmont Junction, which is LMS. So if you take the distance of this curve in front of the mountain range, that forms the LMS. Okay, so for, for example, this was your first point and this was your second point, and you take this, uh, you measure. The length of this curvature okay so this becomes your lms and the ratio uh, sorry the lms is divided by the straight line length of the mountain front so you take then you take the straight line distance between point a and point b this becomes your ls so when you divide this lms by ls you get a value that is called that is that defines sms and this was given by Bull and McFadden in 1977. Okay, and also it was defined by Keller et al. in 1996. So, what does it reflect? What does it signify? It actually reflects the balance between uplift and erosion. Uplift maintains a relatively straight fronts. Okay, because if the uplift is more, then our rivers or the hydrological system do not have time to erode these fronts and forms such curvature and form such curvatures okay and if the erosional erosion is more then erosion produces these irregular or sinus front okay so now let's see what are the smf values for tectonically active fronts and tectonically inactive fronts. So if you have values down to 1.4, that indicates tectonically active front, okay? 
and if you have values greater than 3 that indicates presumably inactive fronts that means your LMF is more or three times or more than three times your straight line distance okay so those uh, fronts will indicate presumably it indicates inactive fronts so to complement the mountain front sinuosity we also calculate valley floor width to height ratio which is called vf so this valley floor width to height ratio it is useful for understanding valley morphology and tectonic activity for example you make a cross section across a valley okay and then you get such such sort of valley morphology so you have to make few measurements to calculate this vf okay so first is vfw which is the width of the valley width of the valley at the base okay and this is the elevation of the left valley divide elevation of the left valley divide elevation of the right valley divide so how do you know where the left and right is so in this case you have to face downstream you have to un uh, first understand where the downstream is and if when you are facing towards the downstream direction of a river or down flowing uh, direction of the stream then the valley side on your left will be left side and valley side on the right uh, your right will be right side of the valley so this is how you get the different measurements in this formula and yes esc esc is the elevation of the valley floor or stream channel okay at this point so what is the value of the elevation uh, for example 50 meters at this in this uh, diagram okay so this in this way you have to measure all these uh, parameters so okay so when we talk about the morphology of river valley and its relation to tectonics then if the valley is v shaped okay v in shape then it reflect reflects active down cutting and active down cutting on the other hand represents reflects active uplift and low vf values of course why because valley floor uh, the width of the valley floor will be very less right and they will form v-shaped valleys and in u-shaped valleys represent lateral erosion okay and broad flowed valleys will be there like the one we saw in our previous diagram okay and high vf values is this will definitely give us high vf values which will be greater than one and relative base level stability or tectonic quiescence okay and these will be u-shaped uh, when you will look into it then you will understand okay this is u-shape in uh, its morphology okay so the combination why understanding these two parameters together becomes important because the combination of these two indexes it provides a semi-quantitative information on the relative degree of tectonic activity of the considered fronts and their classification into different tectonic activity classes for example your class one tectonically active fronts are characterized by low values of both the indices right so less than 1.4 smf value and less than 1 vf value represents our tectonically active fronts and in the same way class 3 will be for inactive fronts that shows high values for both the parameters okay so this classification system helps us in understanding and differentiating the tectonic activity levels of different fronts in a mountain okay and you can also compare where whether uh, the straight front have uh, you know u-shaped valley or v-shaped valley okay so based on uh, you know combining these two parameters you can talk about active forces which are controlling the entire landscape morphology in the area so next these are the literature that I have taken help from for making this video now you can move to the next video for understanding the practical calculating different measurements for these two parameters these two morphometric parameters using QGIS thank you for watching this video and also subscribe and stay tuned by pressing the bell icon. I'll see you in the next video.